Hello everyone, my name is Alicia Jackson, Licensed Professional Counselor, and welcome to my channel. Today we are reviewing Married at First Sight, Season 16, Episode 16. Here at this channel we do a therapeutic review where we utilize the model internal family systems to really take a look at what's motivating these behaviors that we're seeing and, and what is happening in the communication and interactions with these couples. And potentially, hopefully, learn a little bit about ourselves. If you are returning, welcome back. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get started. First we have Clint and Gina. Now this is the retreat episode. Usually on the retreat episode, we do see a little bit more growth with the couples. This season is very peculiar as it seems that either there's a lot of footage that we're not seeing or which has been happening with some of the couples like Clint and Gina there's just a lot of standstill there's not a lot of forward movement and so this didn't really make for a really a great episode for me for us to learn a little bit more about the couples a little bit more how they interact from day to day we saw some we saw a little bit but not much so with Clint and Gina they are headed to the house they're going to this they have big huge beautiful houses in uh, Glattenburg Tennessee and so they are going there and looking forward to spending some time together and hanging with the other couples Clint mentioned that hey since the honeymoon we haven't really shared space a room one bed together and so this is a place where they'll be able to do that and so Clint's excited about that he's excited about having fun with the couples but he's also excited about feeling more like a married couple with Gina. Clint is hoping that this will get them out of the friend zone. Uh, and I don't know. I believe that Gina is comfortable with Clint, who he is. And she even said that she appreciates who he is as a person. Um, they did have, which I thought was very cute. They had this like husband pageant where all the men got gussied up and the wives helped them. And with Clint, Gina gave him a man bun, you know, slick back. He was feeling himself maybe a little bit too much, came out shirtless, you know, showing Gina, you know, what he had to offer. <laughs> and um, he had a good time doing it, as Clint does. He was dancing, being himself. Uh, he did get last place uh, on a part of me. I uh, felt sad about that. Uh, you could tell a part of him also did too. Like Clint's ego has been taking a mighty beating through this, uh, through this whole process. I don't think that he felt that there was going to be a, a issue with attraction or that he would be getting such negative critique about his, his appearance. Um, I will say though that Clint's answers to the questions were a bit like, they seemed kind of um, very pageant answers, very just love yourself and spread that love around the world, right? And not really true to who Clint is and really what he has to say. And I noticed that when he is talking to cup, either the other couples or the other husbands, that he's usually coming with his politically correct answer. Like we're focusing on the positive, we're doing um, what it takes, we're keeping it for, we don't want to be quitters. Like there's this part of him that wants to keep a a specific or um, like a, a presentation about his relationship versus saying what's really happening. And I know that Clint has this very direct part of him as well that, you know, shoots straight from the hip. And I don't know if maybe from what he said in front of the women at the honeymoon that he's now been very careful, right? about that but i see here right that they're they're interacting with each other they're sleeping in the bed together gina's feeling comfortable she said it's not an issue for her clint is excited about it they have some time where they go to this like a um, roller coaster um place and they ride the roller coaster together clint jokes about moaning on the roller coaster and Gina said she's a little bit embarrassed sometimes. She even said at the after party that sometimes he becomes the life of the party so much that she feels that uh, he forgets about her. That's a part of her that wants him to maybe stay a little bit more closer to her in social settings. I'm curious if she's ever 
said that to Clint. I'm curious if Clint knows that. I feel that there's a part of Gina that wants Clint to know the things without her saying it, which is very common. Sometimes partners do have a part of them that have an expectation for their spouse to show up in a specific way and they don't say it. They like, they should know. They should know that I would want them to do X, Y, and Z. Well, nobody's a mind reader, uh, especially not your spouse. I'll say that for sure. And so they do need to know. They do need to know. And I feel that Gina doesn't want to be vulnerable enough to say she needs something from Clint. There's a part of her that fears that, right? She has this hyper independence. So she fears telling him like, hey, like I want you to, to be close to me and, and be by me. I By watching them this episode, I feel like both of them are more close to each other than they are willing to admit to each other and themselves. Uh, Gina's warming up to him. And Clint has already been warming up to Gina. He's just been like following her lead and trying to like teeter. Um, and with it being so close to decision day, I'm concerned about that. Now, she did say at the after party that if if things are going well and she still feels like there's a question, like, hmm, maybe it could work, she will say yes on decision day. I hear a lot of rumors in the streets about Clint and the relationship where it is right now, but I just want to focus on the, the show and where it is right now. But I, I don't know. I don't know if Gina's being 100% honest because I also know that she also has a part of her that presents one way. Like, everything's fine. Yeah, I'm attracted to Clint. And then we get to the honeymoon. I don't like ginger features. So, we shall see what really happens. But I just see that this relationship, maybe if it was that season, I think that was like season um, 13, uh, 11 or 13, where they were in New Orleans and it was during the pandemic. And so they had an extended season. If this couple had an extended season where they had maybe four more weeks with each other, now maybe, maybe they would, would really be able to really make their connection but since it's like slow blooming and they're so protective around their feelings that I don't feel like this is going to be able to unfortunately bloom right into something that could be like a meaningful relationship but it does it has all the makings this really this couple this couple unfortunately has a lot of great qualities that could really work together however I don't, I feel like Gina also has a part of her that is, is friend zoning, is friend zoning Clint and, and I, and I don't know if that's just out of fear of rejection, right? Because he did make a, a comment about her body. I don't believe that they're going to be able to really come together, be truthful and honest with each other to make a firm enough foundation to say yes on decision day. But man, there's a part of me that really hates that because they could really work. They really could. Next, we have Shaquille and Kirsten. And Shaquille and Kirsten, this episode, I don't know. They didn't really give a lot of things. You know, they, they didn't have a lot of set, like scenes with each other other than really their time when they went to the, the cool like tubing uh, activity. They were interacting with the couples, you know, having uh, drinks and having fun in that way. And definitely in the groom um, pageant, Shaquille was ready to show his his stuff, right? And and Kirsten, she was prepping him and everything. I feel that, that Shaquille's get up was very nice, minus the tie. I feel like maybe one of his bow ties would have been a better choice. Just my humble opinion. But take it or throw it away. However, he got third runner-up, um, you know, being stylish and, you know, and acknowledging that. He also uh, did give a few pageant ads answers. He did have two responses that were pretty interesting. One, that he wanted to offer, if he was the president, right, he would offer free couples counseling to all couples. Of course, you know I'm going to approve that message. 
The second one was advice that he would give any married couple. He said that you're supposed to make yourself happy and focus on making yourself happy in your marriage. And then, you know, then your spouse will be happy. And, you know, of course you can do stuff for them, but make sure you're happy. And so I'm curious about that. We've seen him. I've seen this be a thought that he has, like this part of him wants to have his independent happiness and finds that in his work and his mentorships. And Kirsten's a bit taken aback by that. You can see her facial expression um, because she does have this expectation and need that she has communicated that she wants to spend more time together. She wants to have that quality time with him. And his idea of quality time is a bit different. It's to, for Kirsten to see him in his element, to see him doing the things because that's how he gets the validation. Like, look at what I'm doing. See how great it is. Tell me how great I am for doing these things. That's how he gets and has gotten his, his validation, right, as a child. And so because of that, because of that, there needs to be some exploration, some curiosity about this part of him that potentially has a fear that his spouse maybe won't show up for him. Now, Kirsten has given him reasons to to question, right? To question that. And I know that maybe Shaquille's getting a lot of flack because he's wanting her, he has these expectations of her, of her you know, to always be there, to be there with him by by her by his side all the time. And those expectations are not realistic, right? Kirsten also has some expectations of Shaquille as well. Um, and so there needs to be a meeting in the middle and they need to show up for themselves. Not in a way that right focus is solely on their happiness, but to get those needs met right? Those needs met. There's a way that Shaquille can show up for Kirsten as a husband that could be validating to him as a man and vice versa, right? And so I want Shaquille to get a little curious about this idea of like, you make yourself happy. Yes, I believe that you are are definitely a part of like being happy is an inside job. But there's a reason why he's not feeling happy and there's a reason why he's doing whatever it is, X, Y, Z, focusing on work, doing the mentee work. There's a reason why he is doing those things to make him happy. And that's something for him to get curious about. And I'm not saying it's neither good nor bad. It just is. You know, we all have different ways that we try to fulfill, right? Try to fulfill those unmet needs in our life. And none, and none of them are good nor bad because they're needs and they have to get met, right? And so it's up to us to get curious about the methods that we use to make us happy. And so I'm, I'm, I'm offering that <laughs> invitation to Shaquille as well. Um, they are um, having a good time, right? And they're doing the tubing activity. Shaquille is excited because Kirsten is scared because on the honeymoon, it was the other way around, right? And Shaquille was like taking slowly, a like slow but steady ride on those ATVs and Kirsten was just vrooming, right? And so now she's a scared one and he's like, okay, I'm not scared. Um, but they have fun. That, that was, it was great to see that. I'm curious if they're having fun together. They have a little cute moments. We saw the little Sad, sad attempt at a freestyle, you know, in, at the apartment before they came to the retreat. So we saw that. Um, they did have this, like, discussion about decision day. Like, Shaquille's like, hey, where you at? And Kirsten's like, I don't know. You know, and Shaquille's taken it back by that. Like, what else do you need to see? What else do you need to see? And so for her, the communication is a barrier. When people say communication is a barrier, I think we need to be a little bit more clear about that. Right, a little bit more clear about that because communication, there's a lot of things that can happen in communication that can be barriers. One, how someone is communicating, their type of communication. The there's different styles. There's direct, there's indirect, right? There's um which is indirect is like passive aggressive, there's passive communication, um, like 
an example. We'll talk about an example, but an example definitely of someone who uses passive uh, communication or um, is, is kind of errors. He uses passive communication. Um, Jasmine, she uses sometimes passive aggressive communication, right? Um, Kirsten, she, she has... She's been in this teeter. Like, sometimes she'll use direct communication, but the issue is she sends mixed signals oftentimes. So that has been the 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 hard thing for Shaquille to understand, like, where he's supposed to go, as he talked about with the, with the other husband. Like, okay, first one week is this. The second week is this. The first week is this. So there's a lot of barriers in their communication, one with her sending mixed signals, him trying to stand up and be what she needs, and then whatever the need is, it kind of changes a little bit of what she feels about how he's showing up. And it's almost like there's a like an obstacle course that she wants him to go through in order to get a gold star. And with Shaquille being one of those people who really likes to, he has a part of him that has been, he gets the gold star. He, that's, that's a part of his like school behavior and a part of him that gets that validation through school. When you get a gold star on your spelling bee <laughs> test or your your uh, math exam when you were a little kid, like that gave you a boost, right? And he's been wanting that gold star from Kirsten and hasn't been getting it. And definitely in this conversation, he is he's a bit taking it back that she's in the middle. Um, I feel like communication uh, is something that can be, you know, can can improve. It, it doesn't have to be a, a deal breaker. It depends on what Kirsten is talking about. She says she gets really frazzled, real, really frazzled when they have miscommunications. I feel like that's not necessarily, in my opinion, a deal breaker because most married couples have communication issues. They just do. It's a part of their protection. If you are really not secure that your needs are going to be met or you're not used to speaking up your voice, there's protection, like you've been made to feel small and made to feel like your voice doesn't matter, then you're going to have a, a really hard time saying what you need in your in your marriage. And so most marriages have communication issues. It's not something to, to you know, not a hill to die on. So I'm curious if there's other things, other things that she's not pleased with. We know that Shaquille is He's like, man, I haven't met your family. I haven't met your your dad. I'm a family person, which we know Shaquille is very family involved. He's the reason why his family has stuck together. He's like, we're not going to let our family die down or get, you know, get torn apart because our matriarch and our patriarch passed and so we're going to stay together. And so the fact that he hasn't had much time with Kirsten's family, he's feeling like, what does that mean? Because that's something that she's passively communicating to him, whether she knows it or not, right? She's communicating with her actions, but she's not telling him directly why that is, right? So I don't see, I, I feel like this couple could potentially really could do well and do well together. However, I feel like there are some unspoken things that aren't being said, and that's the barrier in the community with the communication with these with this couple, that there are some things that aren't being said, specifically on Kirsten's end. She says she gets a little frazzled by Shaquille, and I'm I'm curious about that too. Like I want to know more about that. She doesn't really share a lot. She does withhold. We know both of them withhold, right? And so even when Kirsten spoke up at the uh, the dinner table with all the couples. And I always get nervous because I'm like, ooh, is Nicole going to say something <laughs> that's going to disrupt everybody's uh, marriage? But that didn't happen this episode. Thank you, Nicole. But Kirsten, she stated her piece and why she's feeling the way she's feeling. And, and Shaquille said, your feelings are valid. Okay, I appreciate what you're saying. That's correct. Right, he just kept it null, right? There are some things that he's being, you know, tight-lipped about in the same. And that's what I feel is the barrier of communication. They don't want to say what they're really feeling. Or they feel like they've said what they... They feel like indirectly they've said what they meant, but they truly didn't directly say. 
what they meant, which is a very common, a very common um, barrier in communication. But I don't feel like that is a deal breaker. And maybe the deal breakers aren't being said. Next, we have Nicole and Chris. And so Nicole and Chris, they are headed, headed, uh, driving to the retreat. And we see, we see some things that are happening internally in this couple, but these aren't, um, there's some, there's some growth, right? That's happening, right? So Nicole's like, hey, we need to talk about this living arrangement situation. Like what's going to happen? Decision day is in eight days. Like we need to know what's happening. Um, she talked in her co confessional that, hey, I have this part of me that likes to get things done, right? She has this, this part of her that has a sense of urgency about things getting done. And it seems that Chris has a part of him that's like, we'll see. It's the weekend. What are we going to do about it now? Let's just talk about it on Monday. And how it goes is how it goes. You know, we have the three dogs. The three dogs is a big barrier. And for her, she's like, yeah. And that's why, that's why we really need to have these conversations and really figure it out, right? Because the three dogs are a barrier, we're going to have to work extra hard. You know, so there's this part of her that's like, that's why we need to talk about it. And him, he's like, well, it's the weekend. I'm going to have fun, right? And so he's asserting himself. He is in this moment. And so there's a part of me that's really proud of Chris. Like he's asserting himself in this conversation. He definitely sees that Nicole is a little bit distressed about this, but he's like staying firm in it. He's not wiggling. He's like, no, we're not going to talk about it. Now we will talk about it Monday. So he's not ignoring the need. He's just saying, not now. And Nicole, she, she respected it in that moment. You could tell it's doing, it's doing. And then to make matters even worse, they hit traffic. Nicole's concerned about not getting a good room because they're going to be late. And so she's like, Ugh. I'm trying not to have a temper tantrum. I'm trying not to have a temper tantrum right now. I don't know if it, if it did happen. I don't know if she did have a moment. I'm assuming I'm going to make the assumption that she didn't because if she did, I feel like that's something that they would have shown uh, us on the camera. Um, so kudos to her for seeing that she was becoming, you know, un undone a little bit, becoming a little dysregulated and really trying to like manage herself and talk her through her way through it. Like, oh, this is a lot. We're in this car. We were supposed to be there by now. Okay. Right. And able to move through it. She comes in the house. She says no to the, she respectfully. There, you can tell there was a little toot there, right? But she respectfully declines. Chris had her back in the moment. He didn't throw her under the bus. He'd be like, I don't know what her problem is. She don't want a shot. He didn't say that. He said, yeah, she, she's going to decline for the, with the shot right now. Because he knew that she was in a, mo a moment. She had a mood, right? And so he honored her in that moment. He, he had her back. They went downstairs. She was polite. She said, okay, love you. And just kind of had her moment she wanted to to have her space by herself to get herself together and she said i also though don't want to be the like disrupting the fun on the retreat so i am curious though where that energy went did they have a conversation off camera to really talk about that did she sit with herself and process what was happening, right, for her in that moment. Because I'm sure it was, like, bubbling. It's like the house and now traffic. And, you know, and so all those things were bubbling. Did she have a moment to address those feelings? Because if she doesn't or didn't, they're going to bubble up eventually. Like, Monday, when they have the conversation. Like, it's going to, to come out. And so I'm hoping she had a moment to gather herself and and really address the issue. Because there was a part of me that was like, oh, the shots are still going. Is this going to be where, you know, her inhibitions will loosen a little bit and then she'll say how she really feels. Like there was a part of me that was just waiting for that to happen. And kudos to Nicole. She kept it together. In preparation for the husband pageant, she's prepping him. She said, you know, step in front of the judges and do a wiggle. I don't know what she was trying to show him, but she was prepping him. And Chris... 
we saw this side of Chris. And we knew it was kind of there a little bit because he was doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, uh, impression, right? And so we know we had this, like, goofy side. But we really get to see, like, with his wig, him coming out. Like, he's like, I'm not going to really take this pageant thing seriously. I'm going to have fun. And so it was great to see that side side of Chris because he is a little bit more reserved and quiet. And so, and they've been talking a lot about serious things. You know, her, him and Nicole really have been focusing on their stuff, which is great. But it's great that he has this other side where he can just be fun, right? Be fun and, and laugh at himself. Uh, and he also did a very sweet thing uh, afterwards. And because he's noticing, right, that Nicole does have this part of her that does the struggle to affirm her and who she is. So he wrote little affirming notes around their little uh, patio in the basement and she walked and found them and read them and really appreciated them and took them in and she said that, yeah, I know I need to love myself and that's really important. And having him do that and model that, that helps, that helps me to to really be present with myself and love myself. So really beautiful and and that can that can happen it's very true though that she definitely does need to be in the driver's seat when it comes to loving nicole um and so it sounds like chris is in the driver's seat and so hopefully they'll be able to to switch roles right as she continues to grow and and really heal from a lot of the things that she's experienced and so while the husbands which i thought was really sweet were prepping for uh, the group dinner, you know, and Cliff says, all right, everybody tell me, you know, tell me about how, how you guys are enjoying your wives as, you know, I, I don't have that, that luxury or benefit as of yet. And I want to live vicariously through you. And so Chris was like, well, you know, happened for us last night. Uh, so they're, they're still, you know, enjoying each other. It's a beautiful aspect of it. They did share with the other couples that, you know, they did exchange the L words and, um, Chris said that he felt like it, that affirmation was really important for Nicole. So there was a part of me that was like, hmm, I'm concerned if he was saying this just to affirm her. I do, though, really feel like he he means it um, and that he's not going to say something he di he doesn't mean. But there was definitely a part of me that was like, hmm, what's happening here? But beautiful for them. Not much for them in this episode. I'm hoping that they can get this housing situation resolved the three dogs is like a wrench and all of their dogs are important to them. So I have a feeling they will find a way to make it work. Last, we have Jasmine and Eris. And Jasmine says like, hey, I'm, I'm really hopeful that this retreat and us spending time together is really going to help our relationship move forward and continue to grow because they're feeling hopeful after the experts, right? Meeting with the experts. Um, and, you know, there's a part of me that is concerned about her being hopeful. I feel like Eris does, right, does have a part of him that wants to do right by Jasmine because of who she is, right? I do feel that firmly. Uh, and at the same time, I feel like in this situation, I don't know if they were matched so well, right? Um, it seems like the type of girl that Eris wants, Jasmine maybe has to grow into to be, if that's who she wants to be. It does feel, though, that Jasmine is open to to being what Eris wants. And Jasmine actually needs to know that if she does that, that Eris will meet her, right? Eris will meet her. The jury's still out. Well, we do see that they are there. There's some forward movement, right? So they're making, they're doing this, playing this card game in the car, but the cards aren't aren't very positive. As Eris is like, this this is gonna make everybody get a divorce. So they throw those cards away. There's a lot of joking between them two constantly, and I truly believe that that's the fact that Eris does not have comfort having like serious adult conversations and he doesn't know how to navigate them i feel like there's this part of him that's a little awkward right just socially and doesn't know how to be be open and feel comfortable doing that so how he 
balances that, right, is through that humor, which can be a little crash sometimes. Like, he was telling Jasmine to flash the bear. Like, she found it funny, um, and that's that's all that matters. But there, there's another way to joke, and that seems to be the only area where he leans to, right, to joke with her. So, they get to the house first, and they found their place. And so, as Eris is prepping for the pageant, you know, he has the pageant queen herself. And she's talking about confidence is important and giving him all these tips. She's uh, the host of the pageant. And Eris is giving these very politically correct answers, you know, to be what your wife needs and to know what you need to do to attract your wife and be present for your wife. And, you know, he's, he's, he's giving these very, you know, nice answers. Uh, and he won. He did win. Uh, he was definitely feeling himself in true heiress form, right? Having the judges take a picture of him, all of that. Um, and even as a joke, and Jasmine said it was a tradition that, that, um, the winner usually takes a picture, like poses like she's asleep. Um, and in her sash. And so she had Eris do the same, which I thought was really cute. Now, the next day, the next day, they get up in the morning time and she says to Eris, hmm, so my husband just, just woke up and he meditated without me. And he said, well, you didn't tell me you wanted to meditate. She said, I did last night. And so he's like, man, I forgot. And I noticed that she was in a mood. And so she did say something. So I'm glad she said something. I will say that that is definitely an example of passive aggressive communication, right? So a way to communicate that assertively is to say, I'm hurt. I'm hurt because you meditated without me. I thought we agreed last night for us to meditate together right and and i'm also grateful though to see that air said hey you can never have enough meditation so he meditated with her again right to to make her and honor that word right that he said but also make her feel important to him right so there's some forward movement uh happening and Eris is checking in with jasmine to say hey are you noticing any changes that's happening? Are you seeing that I'm trying? Or and she said, I do see some, some, but I want to see more. She's like, you're on your phone sometimes, and I want us to just talk more. Just want to talk more and spend more time with each other. He said, okay. He said, those, those are, those are things, right? Things that are, um, like they make sense. He said, and at the same time, I want you to address it in the moment. Like, tell me. And they're like, hey, get off your phone. Let's do something. Let's let's talk. Let's let's do an activity together. And so Jasmine said, okay. She said, no, I normally stew in it, right? There's a part of her that stews in it, and that's for her to get curious about too. Like, how does stewing protect her, right? How does stewing protect her? And also, what are some ways that she can lean in? And start to be more vocal, right, about the things that she needs and wants from Eris as well. Now, I will say that again, Eris, there's, I have to go back to what Jasmine said from her own mouth two episodes ago now, that my husband should want to, right, want to spend time with me, want to woo me, want to do these things, right, so... It's like, yes, Jasmine needs to speak up for herself. And also, Eric's is like, come on, let's, 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 let's show up too, right? So it's not all on Jasmine. I think this is a space where both of you can, can also work together. Um, and if that's something you really want to do, that's, the jury's still out on that. If that's something that Eris really wants to do. They did state their both concerns, right? Similar concerns at the the group date with everyone. And also, Eris did, did acknowledge his wife's experience of him. And he acknowledged. He acknowledged that it, this has been a difficult, difficult experience for her. And that how she's handled this has been remarkable 
and he knows that it has not been easy it has not been easy at all and he just appreciates her for who she is and that she's sticking with it she's not um you know lashing out and he's saying even if you did that that wouldn't be wrong he's just saying i'm appreciating the fact and who you are as a person and jasmine said in that moment she felt seen right she felt seen and she said also there was a part of her that wondered hmm is this happening because we're in front of everybody um i definitely had that part that came up and i'm curious to right if um, that this is coming out because the two episodes ago, like she was, she was crying in front of the girls, the episode last week where Nicole kind of, she cold cocked him right in front of everybody was saying, you need to do better, right? You need to do better. And so I'm curious if, if this was strategically placed and done, I'm not saying that he didn't mean the words, right? But just saying, like, in two public spaces, his relationship was seen in a negative light. And so he is doing this publicly to acknowledge, right? Acknowledge her, right? Um, which, again, it's neither good nor bad. Just is, right? And so I'm grateful that he was able to acknowledge her. Acknowledge her experience of him. And... He then unfortunately had to leave and go back to work afterwards. And um, also, Jasmine said that she felt like that was a positive because she said it gives them a little time to miss each other, which I feel it really could be. It really could be a great thing where he's missing Jasmine and who she is and who she's been for him putting lotion on his ankles and laughing at all his crazy jokes <laughs> and really too sticking by him, right? Sticking by him. So that could be a great, a great thing for both of them to help him realize who she has been to him. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if the distance makes the heart grow fonder. I do see, though, that Jasmine is leaning in. We hear husband. We hear that word now, which we used to hear at the beginning um, when they first started. So she's opening herself back up. So there's a part of me that's like, oh... I don't want her to get hurt. And, you know, she opening herself back up to be hurt by Eris, you know, as if he is going to say yes on decision day. She said uh, on after party, Jasmine did that she feels like no one should say no on decision day and that they should still keep moving forward to let the cameras, you know, shut down and for them really to connect with each other. Now, there's parts of me that agree with her. Um, and at the same time, I feel like, hmm, is this the part of Jasmine that holds on to relationships for too long? I'm wanting to see more forward movement from Eris. Let me see. Let's see the proof in the pudding. I want to see dates. I want to see flowers. Like, I want to see a lot of stuff to really see if this is... Um, something that he's truly being, you know, intentional about. Really, truly being intentional about building this connection with her. That's something. I'm seeing, like, small little steps. I want to see, like, leaps. Leaps. Because decision day is in eight days. Right? So, over a little over a week. And so, we, he needs to make up some ground for, you know, the first four or five weeks <laughs> that that Jasmine has experienced him. That's just in my humble opinion. That's something I want from him. I don't know what Jasmine wants from him. Um, that she needs to speak up to. But I definitely feel that Jasmine deserves that and more. Truly do. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about this retreat. About where the couples are. Who's saying no? Who's saying yes on decision day as it's the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking, everybody. If you have stuck around for this long, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, be cool, be calm, be centered.